Hey, what's up everyone? Adam here with Probably Got This, and today I wanna to go in more depth on antiquities and show you strategies for excavating, scrying, good grinding spots for leveling the two skills, some money-making tips with it, and a few other pointers that I feel are a little more advanced from my beginner antiquity guide that I released a couple weeks ago. Before we get started, I do want to mention if you want to watch me play live, I stream on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on twitch.tv slash this. And if you want to join our growing community of veteran and new players, make sure to join our Discord and the Brafia and our second guild, the Necropapas. The links to the Twitch channel and the Discord are in the description. And if you like this content, make sure to like, subscribe, share, and heavy attack that bell icon to stay up to date on when I release new videos, do giveaways, and a ton of other content. So antiquities, if you aren't familiar with the basics, you can check out my beginner antiquity guide where I go in depth on all the basic things you need to know. That will be in the description as well if you wanna check that out. But I want to put that as a disclaimer because I'm gonna assume that you have watched that or know some sort of information about antiquities. Anyways, the first thing I want to say, our antiquities are account bound, which is really nice. So if you receive a lead on your alt character, it will be there for your main character or character that you are leveling antiquities up on. This makes finding and completing all the leads a lot easier because you can never skip a beat. It has no level requirement too. So if you're doing a dungeon and you receive a piece of a lead on a level 15 character, you can just do it on your main account. I love that aspect of antiquities. Also, antiquities drop from specific zones and places. So there are certain dungeons that drop part of the mounts. There are certain zones that drop only an antiquity of that zone. There's a world boss that drops like a part of a mount. So if you all want me to do a video on all the locations of the mythic items, the mount, and other notable rewards, let me know in the comments below. But anyways, antiquities are broken down into two skill lines, excavating and scrying, and these take a good while to actually level up. So I want to first show you a few places that you can grind these effectively. So one of the best zones to grind antiquities or in general, the best zones to grind antiquities are smaller zones. You could basically take any small zone and grind antiquities in it. And the reason being is it's less space to cover. So right here is Artaeum. So Artaeum is part of the Somerset expansion DLC. So if you've got ESO Plus, you can uh, have access to it or you can you know buy Somerset. Or if you bought the Graymore edition, you will be able to um, have Somerset unlocked. And the reason this is such a great place is the zone is literally only like right in this area. You can't even travel over here. So it's such a very tiny zone. So like for instance, if I wanted to scry something, so as I complete it, you will see that I'm standing right here and there's, it's in this area right here. It's literally right next to me. It can only be in this area. So this is an amazing zone to grind antiquities in. And basically all you do is you go to your you know, scribal things, you'll do green and then you'll do blue. I know when I did this before, it seemed like you could continually do the purple ones, like green, blue, purple, green, blue, purple, but I've only been able to do green and blue, but you can grind green and blues basically until your heart's content. But it does get a little stale, I will say that, but um, I'll sh go into some other things that you can do that are a little more interesting for leveling. This is one of the best ways to grind antiquity. So you come to Artam, you just scry the green, you excavate the green one, then you scry the blue, and then you excavate the blue one. And then some other zones that you can do is if you've completed the Mages Guild quest line, you can go to any of your starting zones, the whichever alliance you picked. Um, so you could go to the towns and go to, into the Mages Guild, and you can go to Ivea. I think that's how you say it. I don't know how else you say it, but it's like I Ivea. And basically, Ivea is another small zone that you can also grind these antiquities in. Now, a few other notable zones, again, any small zone. So if you want to go to, uh, that's not the right one. If you want to go to uh, Canarthi's Roost, you could go here. It's a fairly small zone. If you wanted to go uh, to Stros Mackay, it's a fairly small zone. Um, if you wanted to go over here to uh, Betnik, you can go here, it's fairly small. But again, Artam is the best because it is the smallest area. But if you don't wanna do Artam, then you have those other options as well. Now, let's go through the actual skill line and I wanna show you guys the pr uh, priority that you should select your uh, skill points into when you come to excavation and scrying because there is a ton 
of skill points that you need uh, for excavation and scrying. I think it's somewhere between 30 to 35 skill points. And you'll see that like these, you know, have tons of different things. You might not even know what a lot of these are. I wanna show you what the priorities are. So first, we're gonna go into the scrying line. The scrying line goes all the way to level 10. And once you reach level 10, you've maxed it out. Same with excavation. And the way that you increase your scrying and excavation is you've got to scry, then you've got to excavate. The first thing that you really need to prioritize when you have it unlocked is the antiquarian insight, because this is what allows you to scry higher level leads. So green, blue, purple, yellow, and then master. And master is uh, the leads for you know your mythic items, okay? So you want to prioritize that for sure. Now, some of the other skills that you wanna prioritize with scrying are coalescence. Coalescence is your best friend, okay? This is the best tool that you have for scrying, in my opinion, and I'll show you why here a little later. But this is your best friend, okay? It is amazing, and I highly recommend using and upgrading this as soon as you can to max it out. The next thing that I would prioritize is Scryer's Patience. This gives you two additional turns of scrying. This is very handy for your yellow, your purple leads, especially when you're a lower level. You will need those turns. Um, but if you have this, it's almost impossible to fail a scrying tablet because it's just so good. Next is I would get Future Focus as well because that is the next one in line because this will give you more Magicka charges in your Augury and that is really, really good, and you'll need that as well so you can use Coalescence, and I'll show you that again, like I said here when we do an example. And then after that, it's kind of up to you. Um, di dilation is is okay. I think it's fine. Um, you can upgrade this if you want, if you like using it. Farsight, I don't really like at all, so I don't really put any of my points into that. Um, I'm gonna actually put a point into that right now. And uh, Preemptive Power, you don't get to level nine, so you obviously want this because you start it with an additional row of facets and so that's really good but that's at level nine and so you don't really have to worry about that until the end so like i said priority is antiquarian insight scryer's patience coalescence you want these three for sure and then you want future focus as well okay so now we're going to go into the excavation line and we're going to go into the priority of these skills that you need to put your points into this one's a little more important because excavation in my opinion is harder than scrying so for excavation, um, you obviously want the hand brush. This is how you remove single layers of soil. The more you upgrade this, the uh, intuition meter will double, and I'll show you what that is here when we do an example. But you wanna do this because you're not able to actually look for an antiquity once you reach higher levels of antiquities because you have to get down to a certain level of soil. So hand brushes are really important. And then the next two or three that I would definitely put your points into are the auger right here and excavator reserves and heavy shovel. So the reason that these three are really solid is the auger is how you indicate how near you are to the antiquity and the, or, or to the selected location. And again, I'm gonna show you that once we go into the screen here. And the more you have this upgraded, it gives you a more effective uh, range when you do this. So this is important, this is very important, okay? Excavator reserve is also really important. And you're only gonna be able to do one point when you're at level eight, but this increases the amount of time you have available in excavating dig site. This is crucial for some of the higher end antiquities because you will run out of time if you don't know what you're doing. Next is the heavy shovel. Heavy shovel is your best friend again. So it removes a full layer of dirt and rocks within a large area. And I'm gonna show you exactly what this does here in a little bit. But the more you have this upgraded, um, the better, because the second point that you put into this, it sometimes doesn't make you consume intuition, which is amazing, because that will save you a lot of time on really high-end antiquities. Then the trowel is pretty solid, too. Um, this is important for higher-end ones, but I don't use the trowel as much, um, because I just like the heavy shovel more, but what this can do once you have it fully upgraded is it can remove and safely detonate fissures, which I will show you what those are. Um, and that is really important. And this just does one square basically, not uh, nine squares like the heavy shovel. And then after that, you can do Kenai um, for dig sites um, and Kenai treasure chest. Kenai treasure chest is really nice 
for dungeons and trials when you're looking for chests. Um, I love this passive now, um, but it's not something that if you want to do excavation, I don't think it's necessarily uh, necessary. If you want to save skill points, you can do that later. And the dig site isn't necessarily necessary either. It's nice, but again, if you don't have the skill points, you don't necessarily need that because uh, you have the auger that can show you where these sites are. Okay, so what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to go over the scrying tips that I have for you. And so we're going to go into the scrying board or the auger or whatever, and I'm going to go through this purple lead right here. So I'm going to double click it, and we're going to go into it. So here is basically what you have on the board. And you're going to start out down here. Um, and like I said, I went over this a lot in my beginner guide, but the first thing that I like to do, okay, when I get on the scrying board, that's uh, when you get into the higher end one is like I said, I, you want, I love the coalescence ability. Okay. This is something that is your best friend. So what this does is it turns see that, that symbol right there or that symbol right there, whatever's in the center, it'll turn everything in this uh, shape into that pattern. So as you see, I can start out by clicking, um, you know, I can use this one, I can do these two, I can do these three, okay? So what I like to do is I like to see what shape has the most of a pattern. So I see a lot of this. So what I like to do is I like to just do this. So I will um, group this stuff up. So I'll go, I'll use this right here because what that does is, is you'll see it turns all of those into that. And what happens is it connects everything, okay? That used a Magicka charge you see right there. We have three of these that just use the magic of George. So then I like to do it again. So I'll do it again with this shape. And now I got that. Okay. So I have one more charge left. Okay. Now what these two abilities do, like I said, these are some that you can do if you like, but I don't like it as much, but di dilation basically, like I'll show you what it does once we actually get, um, a pick here, but, uh, basically, so we're going to use one more coalescence. Um, we're going to do that. So now one click and I've gotten one, two, three, four of these in one turn. That's it. It's just amazing. This, this thing is so good. And so what dilation does is, as you see right here, it'll grab all the adjacent shapes that I have unlocked and it will basically unlock them. So it's pretty good as you can tell, but it's not my favorite. I like the hexagonal one or whatever you want to call it, the coalescence one, the best. And then farsight, basically just creates a line. And I, again, I don't like that one. I just like coalescence, but that's my tips and strategies for when you get on the actual board. Um, it's really, really simple. If you do it like that, you need to identify the shapes that are the most. And if you can't find one that's the most, just try to pick one and stay consistent with it and try to see where it touches all of the adjacent squares that you have unlocked. So look, I'll do that. And now I've unlocked that. I did that in three turns. And when you use those uh, special abilities at the top, it does not consume a turn for you on your board. So it's really good. Okay, so we've got our excavation area. So we're going to go over to that now. So once we get into the area, we can queue our um, auger uh, on our quick slots and it will point in the direction of the um, excavation site. So I'm going to go in that direction and there it is right there. Um, so when we go into the excavation site, guys, this is harder in my opinion than scrying. Scrying is easier. Um, I don't think scrying is that hard at all, but excavation is something that you will struggle with when you're lower and you're trying to do higher end antiquities. First thing I want to show you guys is you see that in the purple lead, you start to have these fissures or these little gas things. These are the things that can explode if you excavate down without the trowel. Okay, this removes these safely. This can blow up your antiquity or blow up items. It can make you fail the antiquity. So you have to watch out for these. So you'll notice if I try to auger and find where an antiquity is, these are higher levels of dirt, right? So when you have this auger fully upgraded, you're actually able to identify, uh, you know, where the auger is and you're able to use it on higher levels of dirt. So I don't know if I lost you guys there, but basically if you only have one point into this auger, these layers of dirt, I couldn't use this ability. What I would have to do is I'd have to brush down to this layer right here. And that would be the first layer that you could auger into. So that's why improving the auger is important because it doesn't make you, uh, 
brush down into a deeper layer before you can actually start searching. So that's something I do want to mention because when you get to the higher end antiquities, you're going to have more layers of dirt. So it's important to have that upgraded. Now, as you see, I got a yellow and a yellow. Okay. Yellow means you're close to it. Orange means you're farther from it. And red means you're, you're nowhere near the area. So you'll see these white outlines. So what that basically means is this green or this means that the antiquity is within those outlines, okay? And so how I like to do this is sometimes you can do four corners. You can go from here, 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 and here. Um, but the other thing that I like to do is I look where the gas valves are, these little gas, like, you know, smoke things. There's never going to be a, an antiquity underneath one of the gas things because that would damage it. That would damage it. So... What I like to do is, especially for the higher end ones, I like to identify an area that doesn't, you know, have um, a gas little smoke thing. So basically, if you find a small area that doesn't have that, that's probably a good area to start at. Now, I'm not saying there's not going to be a little gas smoke pillow thing, you know, next to one, but it will not be directly on top. I've never encountered that. But like you see here, you have the outline that shows you where in the vicinity. So what I like to do is if you go down, right, it's that same outline. So right now, you know, in this area, so what you could do is you could go up into this corner. Okay. And it's still there. So you have another white outline, right? And you have to find where the outlines share. So right here we have this and we have this. The only place that these share are basically this row right here, these two right here, because you look, boom, boom, and you look right here, boom, boom, and right in here. So my bet would be that the antiquity is right here. So let's see. See, that's the antiquity. That's the antiquity, antiquity, antiquity. So if you if I lost you there, let me show you that again. So you see that this and this share these two, and then that one shares these two. You have to kind of use a process of elimination and use your mind a little bit and say, okay, so if this is saying it could be up there, this doesn't reach up there. So it can't be up here, right? So you have to use your you have to use your mind there a little bit and think about that. So now that we're out of Argor charges, we can start digging. When we dig, we build up this intuition bar. That's what I was telling you guys before. So what I like to do when I excavate is I like to take out the same layers because I'll show you why. So since the antiquity is right here, I'm going to take out that layer, that layer. I'm going to take out this layer. The intuition bar is full now, okay? So I'm going to use the heavy shovel. And you'll see where it's more shaded in. That is the same layer of soil. And it will remove two layers of soil since I have the shovel fully upgraded. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to remove those layers, okay? Now, I don't have any intuition. And when you have this fully upgraded, sometimes your intuition won't deplete at all. When you use the shovel or the trowel, you will not deplete any of your time. So what I like to do now is I like to get it all consistent. So I'm going to go there, there, there. And there. So now I have this whole spot right here that I can use for the trowel. So I'm going to do that. And it removes two layers. See, it didn't use any intuition. So what I'll do is I'll use the trowel. I'll remove um, one of the fissures and I'll remove that intuition. Because if I were to use the trowel again right there, or the shovel, I mean, it would damage the intuition because we are on the bottom layer of soil. So now what I like to do is I will um, just uncover, 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 uncover. Now we have full intuition. So I'll find a spot that's got the most of one layer that I can find. So as you see, uh, we have this one up here is pretty solid. So I'm going to do that and it's going to move those two layers. It didn't use any intuition. So I'm going to do it again. So we're going to do those. Okay. So we got to that layer. Now I'm going to remove that, remove that, remove that. Okay, we have found the antiquity. Now we look for bonus items, okay? Again, you can use this even when it's halfway full. It'll only remove one layer. So if I go up here to do it now, it will remove one layer. But what I like to do after I do that is I like to get a full square on the same spot. So right here, that is the, this is all one layer. See that? So it's going to take down two complete layers. That is the best way to excavate remove layers and get it 
the same layer and you take out so much. See, I just recovered two bonus items. And so that means there's probably one more here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove, um, we're gonna remove that, this, this, and this. Because whenever you're on a bottom layer, if you're in the antiquity, you never wanna use this heavy shovel because it will damage it and it will, and it will basically kill it. So we're gonna remove those layers and now we are almost on the same layer right here. So we're gonna shovel. We're gonna we're gonna use this to get rid of. Actually, we're gonna use that to get rid of that. Actually, we need one more. So we'll go boom, boom. We'll get rid of that fissure because that can cause a chain reaction and it can damage other items. So we're gonna move that. We're gonna move that. So now we are all on the same layer in this area right here. So we're gonna do it again. Remove that. Remove that. Remove that. And now we're out of time. So. That's how I do my excavation process. It's something that you seriously can do and get better at the more upgradable points you have into it. When you get to the harder antiquities, you're going to need more points into your auger, like I said. You're gonna need more points into the excavator reserves, the heavy shovel, and the hand brush. These are crucial things to have for your excavation. So that is the excavation process, you all. Um, and, and those are some tips that will help you when you actually excavate in this game. It's something, again, that is uh, kind of complicated when you first go into it, if you don't know what you're doing, especially when you get into the higher end antiquities. But I hope that those tips with excavation really help. And let me know if you have any other tips for people in the comments below. Now, I do want to go over real quick some money-making options and some other little tips that I have for antiquities. The one thing I say is you can make a lot of great money from antiquities, okay? If you go to every single zone in the game, okay, any base zone even, if you just do Ebonheart Pack, Direfall Covenant, Automated Dominion, every single zone will have three green uh, treasures that you can get. You can do multiple, obviously, but it has three of the codexes, three blue, and then it has one purple. The greens sell for 250 gold. The blues sell for 1,000, and the purple sells for 5,000. If you do the purple in every single zone, there's 34 individual zones in the game. 34 times 5,000, that's 170,000 gold just from doing all the purples. That's amazing. And then plus all the blues you get as well, that's 1,000 times 34, which is 34K, and then the green is 250. So you're going to make over 200K from just doing the three antiquities in each zone. Now, that might take you a little bit, but it's still a great way to make money. These antiquities rack up and they stack, and you'll always get a constant uh, price for them because you can sell them to merchants. They're never going to fluctuate. And so these are great ways to make money, and that's what I would do if you want to make um, quick money with antiquities is just go to each of the zones and do that. And that's the other thing I want to say before I end the video is my other tip for antiquities when it comes to leveling or finding other ways to uh, do it besides grinding in Artaeum is go to each zone. So what I like to do is when you're lower level and you can't do purple antiquities, I like to go to every single zone and do the blue and the green one, okay? Then go to Grotwood, green and blue, green shade, green and blue, Canarthi's Ruth, green and blue, Malavator, green and blue, Reaper's March, and I do that for so on and so forth. Until you're able to actually do purple leads, then when you're able to do purple leads, you can go through every single zone again and do the purple ones, and it gets you a lot of good XP, and it gets you quicker and closer to the max excavation and scrying levels. But that's going to wrap up the video, guys, for the advanced antiquities. If you have any suggestions or any other tips you'd like to share with anyone, make sure to put that in the comments below. Again, you can watch me play live on twitch.tv slash probably got this on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the link is in the description, and you can join our Discord and our guild. The link to the Discord is in the description as well. But also make sure to check out my social media on Instagram and Twitter. And remember to like, subscribe, and heavy attack that bell icon if you like this content. And if you want to stay up to date when I release new content. But anyways, guys and gals, make sure to have faith, be great, and I'll see you guys on ESO.